No bells, no whistles, just a quick summary of all the things that we've learned about different types of mirrors and what kinds of images they form. First, we will address the focal length of all three types of mirrors, and the first type of mirror will be convex. A convex mirror, see, something like this, where there's light over on this side and darkness over here, and it's shaped like that, a convex mirror is going to have a focal length that's on the opposite side. <clears throat> so I put focal length, F is negative one half R, uh, what, R, C, R? Nah, we'll call it R, right? Because R is the distance to C. Here we go. This distance right here is R. All right, good. <clears throat> and uh, then over here at the plane mirror, the focal length, well, think about it like this. If, uh, if it's one half R, I'm gonna use the same equation. I'm gonna say that the radius is getting bigger and bigger and bigger until ultimately I get to a plane mirror. At a plane mirror, that focal length is actually negative infinity, which is the same thing as positive infinity, you know, so it's just really far away. This way, that way, I don't even care, especially if you silver both sides in the mirror. Next up, the concave mirror, and this is where it gets really complicated. So we got those three types of mirrors, and we're talking just about focal length right now, and I'll make you some pretty boxes. There are pretty boxes, and I want to say that the focal length of a concave mirror is just one half R. That's not complicated at all, Dr. Schuster, that's easy. How about this? See the focal length? You'd be like, uh, that distance there is R and the focal length is half of that and it's on the correct side of the mirror where the light is, so we have a positive number. <clears throat> Lovely, it gets complicated over here. So I wanna talk first about plane mirror and the images that can be formed. So here's what we get for images off of a plane mirror. We know, first of all, that they are upright, always upright. Of course, switch left to right, we talked about that. But that also means, what does it? Are these always connected with each other? They are virtual. The images of a plane mirror are virtual because the image is formed on the side where there is no light. You think there's an object on the other side that's creating <clears throat> the light that's hitting your eyes. So it's a virtual image because no light there. All right, and the third thing we know is that the image is the same size as the object. So I would say height of image is height of object. Good, and we could go over to the convex mirror for the images consideration. First of all, they are upright, just the same, and they are virtual because, well, let's give yourselves a little example right here got myself some convex mirrors and I have an object here and an image here and it's upright and it's smaller. Let's go a little bit closer with our object. A little bit closer. I got a video where I do all these so make sure you're looking at that. And it looks like the, um, let's compare these guys. This is the image size there. It seems like it's 1.5 centimeters. I got two centimeters image as I got a little bit closer. As I get still closer to the mirror, I see that the height of the image is actually approaching the height of the object. So let's write that. I'm gonna say smaller, smaller but the height of the image goes to the height of the object as Ooh, as the distance of the object goes to zero. That means as we approach the mirror. Let's see if that makes any sense. As we approach the mirror, then I guess the mirror is supposed to be looking more and more like a plane mirror. Just like our planet Earth looks relatively flat when we're really close to it. You get further away from it, you'd notice it's a sphere. But as we approach the mirror, we'll see it more and more as a flat mirror, regardless of how convex it is. So I hope that makes sense also. And we'll go to concave, and concave is really complicated with images. So I'll make you a graph instead. Here's my graph. My graph is like this. I'm going to graph for you. Uh, here, I'm, I'll make a little tick mark at the height of the object and another tick mark at negative the height of the object. And this is, oh, this is gonna be, um, this is the distance of the object. You see, the height of the image, I'm graphing actually the height of the image, and I can do that in green to make things a little more lively. The height of the image is very dependent on where you are. So I will say, let's put a couple more tick marks here. I need a tick mark here at the focal length, and I need a tick mark here at twice the focal length, which is R. 
Okay, and sometimes I've called that C in different locations, but um, <clears throat> let's first agree that we had a graph where we put C, the object was actually at C, and we found that the image was also then at C, but the height of the image was the opposite of the height of the object. So we can put a little dot in green where we said if the distance was C, or R as we're calling it, then we got a dot right there. Similarly, now this is really much the same argument as, as this. As you get closer and closer to a concave mirror, it looks more and more like a plane mirror. I mean, deal with it. Things that are curved don't look curved when you get close to them. Get really close to them, I mean, like really close to them. And so we find that the height of the object approaches the height of the image, or put the other way, the height of the image approaches the height of the object as we go in right here. So we got a dot right there. Also, we know that there's no image formed by, oh shoot, there's no image formed by putting the object at the focal point itself. Let's see if we can see this. Yeah, here's the focal length, and there's the object at the focal point, and the rays are coming out parallel, so there's no image, or to put it another way, the image is at infinity. So the, <laughs> this function is actually like this. Oh, dang. And then over here, it's all like, well, it's at infinity again, but it's at positive infinity just as we come in, and it will be approaching that point right there. This is, wow, wow, that's what's happening. There's an asymptote right here. i probably do that in red. I think that makes more sense. There's an asymptote at the focal length, where you don't want to talk about the image formed at the focal length because it's at infinity and negative infinity at the same time, and the height of the image is either enormous or negative enormous, and yeah, okay. So this graph best shows what I'm writing in words over here because it's complicated. Bye-bye.